interactions with a regulator like the SEC are never stress-free, but the come in and talk to us mantra was, was a real invitation to have a genuine conversation about difficult issues. Productive interactions with the SEC these days are fewer and further between. When individuals and entities come to the SEC with their novel ideas, their feedback, their concerns, their objections, their questions about implementation of a new rule or application of an old one to new circumstances, too often they're met with crickets. Neither staff expertise nor issues ripe for analysis are lacking, so what has changed? In the past, the staff uh, in, in part, I think it's because the staff is, is run ragged by the rule writing agenda, right? So there's just, there's not a lot of bandwidth to think about these difficult issues. Remote work may also play a role. It's more difficult for staffers to spontaneously discuss with one another these difficult issues. But the root of the problem is that the commission discourages the staff from offering much more than shrugs, silence, slow walking, sighs. The culture at the top of the SEC has changed, and that has led to a change across the whole agency in the way we interact with the public. Countless people have told me that they used to feel comfortable coming in and talking to us, but no more. When it comes to interpretive guidance, the commission is closed for business. New, products, new product ideas, not now, maybe later. Approval to uh, do things for which other firms already have approvals, Oh, that was very limited. Uh, the circumstances there was very, the, for the permission there were very limited. Feedback on how a new, um, on how, how a particular set of facts interacts with a new rule, we can't provide you with legal advice. Interactions that do occur are often interminable rounds of unproductive interactions before an unresponsive audience. Even processes that historically have been straightforward, such as filing for new funds, have become complicated. The registration process too often involves unpredictable timelines, inconsistent comments, and an unprecedented lack of transparency. A, spun, a fund sponsor might receive dozens of comments on a filing for a fund, where the only distinction from a prior fund is the asset class underlying it. Product ideas are abandoned before they're submitted to the commission staff for consideration or after years have produced nothing but large legal bills and diminished trust in the commission. Some perceive meeting with the commission is not only unproductive but inadvisable. People have told me that they will only talk to me uh, with lawyers or they've said that they're you know, meeting with me against the advice of counsel. Um, people worry that the inevitable result of meeting with the commission is just going to be an enforcement action um, rather than a, a genuine discussion. The commission's announced ramp ups in its cyber and crypto unit, um, and it has treated, uh, it, 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 it's characterized the whole crypto industry as lawless. It's treated cyber events as fertile ground for enforcement actions. But these concerns aren't limited to crypto and cyber. Other people have told me they're less inclined now when market events are happening to come in and talk to the commission because they fear it will result in rulemaking later premised on the fact that they came in to talk to the commission. Um, you know, you can think the experience of funds during, during the early days of COVID. So we're scaring people off from coming to talk to us. The stilted communications, half-hearted engagement, quick draw of enforcement guns, and limited transparency that characterizes the Commission's approach to interacting with the public should concern anyone who cares about this great agency and about the markets we regulate. The increasing chasm that has emerged between the regulator and the regulated undermines industry's ability to serve investors and markets. Given how regulated the securities markets are, in order to do a lot of things, people actually have to come in and talk to us, and often they have to actually get some sort of regulatory action from the SEC. By not being willing to engage in nuanced analysis on these issues, we end up leading to defensive overcompliance. And what that means is that, especially for small firms, which are often the most innovative, um, it's cost prohibitive. Dissuading people from coming in to speak with us also deprives us of information that we need as a regulator. Um, it, it helps, it, 
when we talk to people, it helps us get a view into what the market is actually doing, what's happening out there, what practices are out there, what technologies people are using. All of us, the commission, the staff, and the public, have a role to play in reigniting, produ reigniting productive discussions um, between the SEC and the public. The commission, of course, has to start that process, and we have the biggest role to play. As we often point out, tone from the top matters. Staff and market participants have little power to change the dynamic that the commission has set in motion. So what should the commission do? First, we should pare back our rules, rule makings, um, focus on, on the rules that really are important to get done, and that enables us and the public to um, devote the, the appropriate attention to each proposal. Second, we should use concept releases, public roundtables, potentially consensus workshops to help us identify the problems that we're trying to solve and then tailor solutions to those problems. Third, we should propose realistic rules without putting clickbait in there so that we're distracting people's attention from really the core of what we're trying to do. Um, fourth, we should form an advisory committee made up of chief compliance officers. I've found them to be so helpful for understanding how rules actually work in practice. Fifth, we should consider um, providing greater insight into where a registration statement is in the process at the SEC. Sixth, we should direct staff to clearly articulate specific issues that are delaying commission action and a plan for addressing those issues. Obviously, that plan will involve work from the person coming in to uh, work with us. Um, and finally, we should encourage staff to use its expertise to work through difficult regulatory issues, including the application of existing rules to new technologies. Um, and we should direct the staff not only to consider how those new technologies might hurt investors, but how withholding those technologies from the market could hurt investors.